Hello everyone, this is Barbara Howard and welcome to my podcast. Today is February the 10th, 2021 and this is episode number six. Okay, so last time I was speaking with you about an event that I was going to participate in for the American Literacy Corporation. Uh, they were spotlighting black authors, children's books, and it was fabulous. It was this past um, Saturday, the 6th. So I'm going to strongly recommend that you go to their Facebook page. They used Zoom to stream. And they are there as part of their Reading 365 program. They are there every day reading stories to children and highlighting authors. I tell you what, it was phenomenal. There was such a variety. A lot of them were picture books, glorious illustrations, just beautifully done. Um, there were books about yoga, children, and you know, um, practicing yoga, different steps that they can take. Uh, there's another author who wrote a book about her experience having a premature baby. She wanted to write a book for her son uh, and everything that that entailed. Another whose daughter has sickle cell anemia and the different things that a child goes through having that um, that disease and what to expect and how to navigate through life if you're feeling too hot or if you're feeling too cold or if you have to go to the doctor. So many different types of books. Of course, a lot of black history, um, affirmations, wonderful affirmate books of affirmations for young black children. It was great. And there's an author there who gave a wonderful, well, he wasn't able to read much from his book, but he is an authority on the culture of Haiti. And we all said, when this thing opens up again, we've got to make that trip. But I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to strongly recommend that you go to their Facebook page. It is American Literacy Corporation. Check out last Saturday's event. It ran for several hours. You can let it play while you're, uh, you know, walking and, you know, let let it play in your phone or while you're driving. Uh, you, you'll really be impressed. I, I know I was. So today, um, oh, and they're going to buy copies of my uh, children's book, A Day for the Animals, and they're going to be giving away copies. And so that's an extra bonus. And I'm really, really happy about that. So if anyone from the American Literacy Corporation is listening, I want to give you a big thank you uh, to Madison and Floyd Stokes. Uh, you guys are you guys are awesome. You guys rock. All right. So today, well, let me say this. <laughs> <laughs> While I was speaking to them about my children's book, we start, had a discussion about black history and a little bit about my background, which was kind of funny because someone on Instagram had said, I would love to know more about your career. <laughs> and I never talk about it. Uh, one of the reasons is because the environment that I worked in uh, was an open, to uh, open TS environment, meaning the minimum uh, security clearance you could have was top secret. Uh, the majority, I would say 90% of the people who worked in that that center had clearances, uh, you know, above that. So there are things that um, I definitely couldn't talk about. Um, I don't like to mention names, and I definitely don't want to discuss the types of projects that we were working on. However, um, there are, you know, a few little anecdotal stories that I could share. So I did share one uh, during my my uh, discussion time with the gentleman on Saturday. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try to find ways to um, to talk a little bit about what I used to do. <laughs> because it's funny um, to me that people are, you know, interested <laughs> in who I am. Right. So um that was kind of fun. One of the things that I mentioned was uh, when I got uh, assigned to provide some technical support to uh, a group of uh, soldiers, uh, they uh, they had not had a woman work in that center uh, ever. <laughs> so when I got there, um, that was one of the things. It took me a minute to notice that, that I was like the only woman down in this this uh, facility. 
Um, it's the, the, the rooms are uh, two levels below the first floor of the Pentagon. And uh, you have to surrender your ID and lots of other things. And I was escorted everywhere that I went. Um, <laughs> there was not another woman in sight. So I finally did ask. And they had just built a woman's restroom. And they literally had taken a piece of printer paper with a, a, you know, a marker and made the letter W and taped it to the door. <laughs> That's, that was interesting. So being the only woman, being the only black woman, being the only um, civilian a lot of the times made it for a very unique experience. And uh, someone said on Saturday, you are black history. And I thought, you know what? I'm not even mad at that because it's true. <laughs> there were some places where I worked where I, you know, was the first one to walk through the door and thankfully not the last. But I can share a little bit about what I did before I became a contractor. I, I took a job in the federal government, uh, my first first real job out of, co <laughs> out of college uh, with a a military uh, group that was studying information systems and business systems to plan for the next 35 to 45 years. And so everyone on that study team was the head of a directorate or they were a general officer. And then there was me, <laughs> this little girl, uh, straight out of, you know, not ready for prime time. You know, here I am, bright lights, big city, and, uh, you know, it was Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. I was a political science major. So this was like, wow, I'm here. <laughs> I've landed. Uh, so there I was. And I provided administrative support to the team. Uh, one of the gentlemen said, I normally don't have to work this hard. I usually hire people to do all of this reading for me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what I was dealing with on a regular basis. They didn't like having to be shut in a room. They had no one to do the hard thinking, working, reading. Um, no one was there to provide them with the briefs and the summaries or what we would call the cliff notes of uh, what was going on. Um, every day we interviewed high ranking officials from across the board uh, to get their input input on the types of information systems that they had within their agencies and how they could continue to work or how they could build them to work together. Um, the systems were what we called stove piped, meaning everything went up and down the chain, but nothing went across and nothing was shared for a lot of reasons. So there was a lot of analysis that had to go on and I, I was there to handle all the care and feeding. I provided them with all the all of their tools, all of their briefs, all of the documents I printed out, pasted matrices across the walls around the rooms. It was insanity is the amount of information that was coming through there. But like I said, it was for plans for the next 35 to 45 years. Of course, I wasn't even 35 years old at the time, and I couldn't even think how far in advance they had to plan this and how it would impact generations to come. Um, the lead of that study team was a one-star general. I will say his name was General Edgar because I know that he's no longer with us. And he was from the South. He had a wonderful, I don't want to use the word twang. I don't, I don't know any other way to say it, but he had a wonderful uh, accent. And I would leave the room very rarely, uh, but I went to get a cup of coffee and I came back. And there was a note on my desk and General Edgar walked by and said, Barbara, call your mother. <laughs> and I said, yes, sir, I will. So the only call that only personal call that I could get was from my mother. And uh, I was always ordered to make sure that I returned her call immediately. They were wonderful to work with. Um, they treated me with, with the utmost of respect. Uh, I learned about so much working with them. It was a six-month project, but it lasted well beyond that. Uh, I 
had to write on the walls the different acronyms and uh, ranks to learn the ranks and the insignias and all of the things because everything sounded like alphabet soup to me. Uh, uh, the first thing that I learned was if if the officer had a stripe on his pants, he was an uh, he was an officer. If he had two stripes, he was a general officer. <laughs> and we had a uh, deputy chief who came from the Pentagon over, as we would say, came across the bridge or to, to meet with us on Capitol Hill. And I was so impressed because he was a two-star general. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, the protocol and this and that, whatever. And, you know, his driver brought him over and they interviewed him and and all was said and done. And he came by my desk and exchanged pleasantries. And then he left. And I was I was sitting there like stunned that I got to speak with him uh, on a personal level. And one of the executives came over to me from the team and said, you're impressed with him, huh? And I said, well, yeah, you know, he's, you know, he's a deputy chief and he's, you know, he's two stars and, you know, he's this and that. He's been here and there. And he said, let me explain something to you. General so-and-so is only in charge of his secretary and his trash can. (laughs) And then he walked away and left me sitting there. So that was my introduction to military, politicians, power, information. It's not what you see in Hollywood. (laughs) There's there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and it was, like I said, it was quite the education. Uh, one person that I met that had an incredible impression on me was the, the chief counsel for the chief. Um, we brought him in. He was interviewed. He dodged every question. <laughs> And they kept trying to pin him down on things. And, and they said, well, y- you're, you provide counsel to the chief. We want to know what you think. You know, so I had to go to his office uh, later that afternoon and drop something off to him. And he took me into the, the law library that was adjacent to his office. And he said, do you see all of these books? And I said, yes. Do you see all of these law books? And I said, yes. He said, we can make the law mean whatever we want it to mean. (laughs) Once again, (laughs) I just stood there stunned like, I have so much to learn. (laughs) I'm going to survive here. Anyway, so that was my first, very first job. Um, I was a federal employee. I didn't stay as a federal employee very long. I jumped jumped ship, so to speak, and became uh, a contractor for the Department of Defense. And I roamed around the building at the Pentagon for over 12 years, and it was an amazing experience. I will try to share a little bit more uh, here and there, but I'll leave it at that. So, happy Black History Month. (laughs) And um have a fabulous day. I will chat with you again next week. I'm trying to do this on a weekly basis. Uh, the The book, um, I think I mentioned it the last time, A Day for the Animals is sitting in the Audible QA process right now. So hopefully it'll be up and available in the next few weeks for, audio, uh, for audiobooks. And I'm doing the same for the mystery series uh, with uh, Finding Home. Let me mention this, too, because that's in my bio that I'm a not so cozy mystery author. And I would say it's the it's the drama without the trauma. It's the crime without the grime. So I do write about crime, but in a way that has no explicit sex, no profanity and no graphic violence. So that's what I mean by not so cozy. All righty. So I will chat with you guys again next week. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Stop by BarbaraHowardMedia.com if you want to see any of my books or the book trailers or you know what else. You can go to Overdrive and download them in digital format for free. I love readers. I love book clubs. Uh, Reach out to me anytime if you have any questions. Again, it's BarbaraHowardMedia.com. Take care. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.